Paul in writing to the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He says to them, If in the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what is it an advantage if the dead do not rise? He's speaking to the Corinthian church about the importance of the resurrection because Christianity as a whole hinges upon the claim of the resurrection. That Christ was born, died, and resurrected from the dead as the first fruits, the evidence that all those who put their faith in him will also resurrect from the dead. He is the evidence that life does not end here. Because Paul goes on to say to the Corinthian church, he says, because if the resurrection is false, he says, you might as well then, your perspective should just be eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow you die. If only for this life we have the hope of Christ, he writes, we are of all men the most miserable. But if we look towards the hope of eternity, if we are setting our minds beyond this current state of existence, looking to the kingdom of God, that belief hinges on the power of the resurrection. That all those who belong to Christ, all those who believe in him, all those who are called by his name, that the power of death is void upon them. And in the, in the last day, they will resurrect and they will be partakers of the kingdom of God. We are speaking on the importance of, res of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we, we celebrate the Easter period, the most important period on the Christian calendar, in the last 40 days leading up to this period, Believers from all over the world have been in fasting, have been in, in sober reflection. But we have to remember that the true fast that God requires is that which comes out of the transformation of a person's heart. Ultimately, it is not about depriving ourselves of food or drink or refraining from touching this or not touching that sure those things have their place and the discipline that comes with those exercises can be vital and are good in order to bring our bodies into subjection yet the true fast of the lord that which pleases him the things that he shows and requires us of as he says to through the prophet micah that he has shown us oh man what does the lord require that we do justice we walk humbly we show mercy, we walk, we walk humbly with our God, is that we are to be an embodiment even now of the kingdom of Christ. Through his Spirit, we bear the fruits of the kingdom. And what is the kingdom of God? As given to us in Scripture, it is righteousness, it is peace, and it is joy in the Holy Ghost. And now as we are believers, even in this age, awaiting the resurrection, or awaiting the return of our Savior, we are to already be manifesting the fruits of the kingdom. In Paul's writing to the Galatian church in Galatians chapter 5, he gives to them what the fruits of the Spirit are. But of course, the greatest of these is love. Now, love is a word that is often banded around used very casually everyone declares purports to declare that they have love for their fellow man but love is not as the bible says as the kingdom of god itself is not just in word or in deed love it's but, but indeed the kingdom of god is not just the words but it is deed it is backed up by action and the two greatest loves for the believer is the love of god and love of his, of his fellow man and so let us begin by talking about the love of God. The love of God simply means the willingness to obey, the willingness to submit our will to the will of God. Christ often talked about 
the way the Father loves the Son and the way the Son loves the Father. And the way the Son loves his Father is by submitting his will to the will of the Father. I do the will of he who sent me. My meat is to, do, is to do the will of he who sent me and to finish his work. He says, I always do my Father's will. That is Christ demonstrating the love that he has for the Father. In that, he submits his will to the will of the Father. And as we are celebrating uh, the, the Easter period, we, we recall the moments in which Christ is perhaps at his lowest in the Garden of Gethsemane, in deep prayer, saying, my soul is so distressed, is near unto death. And even in that moment, the love of God shines through. The love the Son has for the Father shines through. Because even in that moment, when Christ says, Father, perhaps there be another way. Perhaps this cup can pass from me. But even in that moment, he says, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. This is the blueprint for the believer. If we say that we love God, then in every facet of our lives, before we take any step, before we take any action, our thought, our speech, our deed should be considered whether it aligns with the will of God. Then we know whether we love God or not. For if we choose to exalt our will above the will of God, then our love for the Father is truly called into question. We can boldly say that Christ indeed kept the commandments because he distilled them down into two, the love for the Father and the love for our fellow man. And we know that even in his darkest hour, the love he had for the Father shined through. And the love for his fellow man is without question. After all, he came, he took upon the form of, of a servant. He could have been born in the palace, yet he chose to be born in the manger. He could have come as someone who was tremendously good looking, tremendously appealing. But he came as someone, as the Bible says in Isaiah 53, that there was no beauty or comeliness that we should even behold him. He was the kind of person you would have walked by. Yet, he endured the suffering of the cross. He bore our, our sins. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. Christ demonstrated his love for man by suffering for man, by sacrificing for man. It is the blueprint for believers also. For John reminds us in his epistle that if we say we love God, yet we hate our fellow man, then we are liars. The truth of God is not in us. Both of these laws, that, that commandments that Christ codified the entirety of the law and prophets into, into this love of God and the love of Suffer for our fellow man, to be inconvenienced, to be chastised, I can very easily declare my love for people, but until I'm willing to actually endure, until I'm willing to be observed and we go back unchanged but to reflect on why on what makes this season so special the 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 the, the spirits of god and bear the fruits the chiefest of which is love <laughs>